Okay, so we keep this uh, whole series as anatomy of questions. And here we want to discuss about uh, the detailed structure of a question. Because if you understand the structure of a question very clearly, you can answer them fast. Okay, and sometimes understanding the structure is more important, even important than knowledge of the subject itself. So uh, today we will talk about unit 1 and unit 2 questions. Okay, so 6 questions from each unit. Approximate number of questions you can expect from these units in part C in CSI net exam. So this is Welcome to another of this anatomy of a question class and uh, Today here we are going to talk about unit 5 so questions from unit 5 and we are trying to see how to answer questions from unit 5 for CSI net exam particularly part C questions so let's begin to see the degree of complexity they offer in these questions. So this is the first question. For successful fertilization in sea urchin, interaction between the surface of the egg and acrosomal protein, specifically a 30.5 KDA protein called binding is necessary. The following factors could affect this interaction and prevent fertilization. Four of the statements are made and then the combination, you need to find out the correct combination. So, like every single combination question, you need to know at least two of the statements to be correctly, okay. So, first of all, the removal of jelly, egg jelly polysaccharides. Second one, removal of binding receptors on egg vitaline membrane. Removal of binding receptors from the egg jelly. Removal of binding receptors from a single cluster on the vitaline membrane. Now, the question said the following factors could affect the interaction and prevent fertilization. So, they are asking a question from the sea urchin fertilization broadly, the broad topic. From there, they want you to give you, like, give them the answer regarding prevention of a fertilization. That means the role of binding protein in fertilization. And if you know the role of binding protein in fertilization of sea urchin, you can answer that. We know binding protein acts as like a lock and key structure to bind with the binding receptor and this binding receptor and binding protein binding is very important for the recognition of a sperm with the egg and then the attachment of sperm and egg properly can be mediated. Now you also need to know where the binding is present and binding receptor is present. So it says removal of uh, egg jelly polysaccharide, removal of uh, this binding receptors or egg vitaline membrane the thing is you know the the binding receptors are present in the egg vitaline membrane you need to know this so if you know it's true that the binding receptors are present in the egg vitaline membrane then say removal of binding receptors from jelly binding receptors are not present in the jelly coat so c is not correct if c is not correct 4 is not correct we know b is correct so obviously either option 2 or option 3 any of that can be correct. Now the fourth one removal of binding receptors let's say among these four removal of jelly egg jelly polysaccharide is also important to prevent the fertilization because the egg jelly polysaccharide also help this sperm for an adhesion to the surface at the very beginning initial point of adhesion. So this is also important for fertilization. So this and this A and B both are equally important for fertilization. So if you prevent them if you remove all those factors then the sea urchin may not be fertilized. Okay. So, sea urchin egg may not be fertilized by the sperm. So, we can say the option 3 to be correct one. And if you remember this property that this is the binding receptor that is present on the surface of the vital line membrane and uh, there is this jelly coat. In the jelly coat there are many of those you know carbohydrate structures are present which are important for the sperm to ad adhere to at the very beginning. So, that's one point and second point is the interaction between the binding molecule with the binding receptor. The binding receptor is present on the surface of the vital end membrane of the egg and the binding molecule is present in the surface of the sperm, okay, the part of the acrosomal protein, okay. So, that's all. So, now let's move on to another question. A mutant was experimentally generated which had wings reduced to haltier like structures. The following statement uh, such statements are put forward regarding this phenotype. So, this is about Drosophila. So, when you read this question, as I always told you, you don't need to read through all the statements. If you read the first part of the question, you already know what this question is about. This question is from Drosophila wing development, okay, and involving gene names like Ultra Bithorax, Antenna Pedia. 
So if you don't know this UBX or ANT genes, then you should leave this question. You cannot attain it. But in my belief, if I read this question, I can explain this question without even knowing what these genes are going to involve and do the function. Because we are talking about uh, like a mutant generated which had wings uh, not fully formed. Okay, So wing had deformities. Now ultra bithorax gene ectopically expressed in second thoracic segment. Antenna pedia gene ectopically expressed in the second thoracic segment. C is a homo, it's a homeotic mutation or it's a mutation in the gap gene. So among these two genes, ultra bithorax and antenna pedia, you need to know which is what. So if you know that whether it's a gap gene or a homeotic gene. Now remember gap genes role is at the very beginning of the development to onset of like different body fragmentation. Uh, so marking the different range of the body fragment. But the homeotic genes role is to allow the formation of different organ structures in a specific body segments of the body of Drosophila embryo. So uh, the modification or problems related to the wing formation must be linked with homeotic gene mutation. So this should be a mutation in the homeotic gene without knowing anything. Just the basics of homeotic and gap gene, we can come to this uh, conclusion that C statement is correct. So if uh, C statement is correct, we can exclude option 1. Okay, So they are also clever, they keep 3 options with C. Now we need to know other statements. If homeotic gene mutation is correct, then D is false. So anything with D is also false. So now we are 50% tie, 50-50 tie between option 2 and option 4. Now we need to know whether the ultra bithorax gene is ectopically expressed in the second thoracic fragment or the antenna pedia is expressed in the second thoracic fragment. Now this is something that relies on whether you know this fact or not. Now among this antenna pedia and ultra bithorax, we, we can assume that antenna pedia is a, a gene that is linked with the formation of antenna which must be expressed in the uh, head region, the, the primary fragments, the head regions of the, of the drosophila. But ultra bithorax is something not linked with the antenna so it can be linked with the wings. So if you think like that and attain this question with a doubt but still you can go very close. So this is how you can even guess a question. So while you are guessing a question it's not like just guessing them uh, out of the blue but guess it again with a logic. So if you guess them with a logic you can get yes ultra bithorax can be uh, the gene involved with the wing modification. We don't know where they are present. So we can keep that A is correct and C is also correct. So 4 option 4 uh, is correct in this case. So we know that this homeotic genes, remember always, uh, they always are the final development individual segments of the body are regulated by the homeotic genes. So if you know this and utilizing the idea of the, the this homeotic gene and understanding the antenna pedia term, we can explain the question quite correctly. So this is how you can even guess a question. Let's move to the third one. Following are certain statements regarding the activities of homeotic genes of class A, B and C involved in the floral organ identity. So this question is from the floral organ identity that means the ABC model of flowering. So if you have prepared ABC model of flowering, you can attain this question, you can answer the question. And if you don't know that, you need to leave it. Now as per our discussion earlier, we have talked about ABC model of flowering. And in this case, I am going to explain that again. Uh, so this is a direct question from ABC model. If you know ABC model, you can clearly answer that. It states the activity of A alone specifies sepals, B alone petals, B and C stamen, C alone carpels. Now, if I explain it, this is how it's going to occur. Okay, so there are four separate, like ABC, three separate genes and the combination impact of A, B and C gives us different result. So A only give us sepals. Okay, so think A only give us the sepals, the outermost part. Then uh, A and B give us petals, okay. Then uh, B and C combined here, B and C sometimes stamens and C only carpal, C only carpal, B and C stamen. So as per, if you know this, you know this is the picture that only you need to remember. If you know this picture, now you read activity of A alone specifies uh, sepals, true. Activity of B alone spe uh, specifies petals, no, A, B both are needed, so option B, uh, statement B is not correct. Activities of B and C for stamen, B and C form stamen, that's true. Activity of C alone specifies carpels, that's also true. So A, C, D are the truth, so option 4 
is the correct option so it's a very direct flat question but if you know the mechanism the impact of the genes you can answer that otherwise you need to leave Now another question a two celled embryo is made from blastomere A and B if the two blastomeres are experimentally separated the A blastomere generates all the cells it would normally make however the B blastomere is isolate in isolation makes only a small fraction of a cell it would normally make based on the above observation only which one of the following conclusion is a correct so whenever we are talking about the blastomere means the cells of a blastula stage those cells have properties to produce a whole uh, new embryo because they are totipotent type but not all the cells can get uh, to produce the complete larva complete organism at the end so if you separate this blastomeres some of the blastomere in the isolation can give rise to every single cell type but in isolation some other blastomere may not produce all the cell type only produce few cell types and this helps us to understand a concept known as specification okay and there are different types of specification during the blastula development or blastulation process there are autonomous specification conditional specification and sensitial specification we have already talked about that remember so what happens in all autonomous specification occurs during early embryogenesis and can create asymmetry from homogeneity the fate of cell depends on the factors secreted into the cytoplasm during cleavage so even during the process of cleavage from morula to the blastula stage their their fate is already determined while conditional specification is a cell extrinsic process and it relies on the cues interaction between the cells from the concentration of morphogens so based on the concentration of different morphogens and interaction of the cells with the neighboring cell uh, they have uh, their differentiation process depends okay so if we read of all these four statements here a blastomere is autonomously specified while b blastomere is conditionally specified now think about a in isolation can give rise to all the cell types which a used to give rise earlier that means there is no change after the isolation so when there is no change in the isolation that means that the determination to produce the cells i mean all the important necessary components that is needed for the differentiation into different cells are already present in the cytosol so this is an example of autonomous specification so b should be conditional because when you separate them from the neighboring cells their fate is not the exact same fate that it used to observe when that cell is present with the neighboring cells because the b uh, this 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 blastomere b needs to be associated with the neighboring cells because they are going to influence the b to achieve a specific fate which it's not getting in isolation thus not forming all the type of cells so b is undergoing the conditional specification so uh, the statement one is correct the option one is correct if you read the rest of the options a blastomere is conditionally specified will be autonomously specified it is wrong descendants of a blastomeres are autonomously specified there is no about like descendants because this cell and its descendants will do the same job so uh, related any statement related to the descendants of a and b blastomere is not important so the only important thing is the statement one so option one is the correct one in this case and sensitial specification is totally different it is a hybrid of autonomous and conditional specification that is predominant in insects entirely based on the influence of morphogen gradient in the sensitium where there is only one giant cytosol and many nucleus after the multiple nuclear division now let's solve this question okay now this is another very easy question in a flat question so if you find this questions you should always attend the question there is uh, three separate column a b and c with the different types of cell division processes i mean the gastrulation process the gastrulation takes place with multiple processes invagination involution ingression delamination epiboly so 
literally this question is given from the slide that i already showed you earlier during the developmental biology class which of the following is the correct combination if we look at column a b with c okay so you need to know uh what this invagination involution stands for and uh, which portion of the tissue is formed utilizing this mechanism i'll show you one picture to explain all okay so invagination is infolding of cell sheet into the embryo and the sea urchin ectoderm is formed in this process okay involution is interning of cell sheet over the basal surface of the outer layer this is how the mesoderm is formed in amphibians so amphibian mesoderm formation is involution okay so two will be with three so another important important thing interesting thing about this question is that you don't need to read through all if you know two out of five or three out of five of this you can answer that so we know that two is correct with three okay two e is with three so if two is with three then so we know that this is uh, like two is it three so the combination are provided in this case are column means uh, a b and c so in that respect you can see the same thing you need to find out so if a invagination so if a involution it is so a is 2 then obviously in column c it will be 3 so if a is 2 then column c will be 3 so a is 2 and column c is 3 it's not present so a is 5 with c 3 is wrong now you need to look for the other like the this one ingression ingression is also told here migration of individual cells into the embryo in case of insects okay so is there anything related to insects there no now another thing is delamination splitting uh, or migration of one set of uh, cell sheet to form a second uh, cell sheet mammalian and bird hypoblast formation so hypoblast formation in bird that is delamination so four in a will be one in c so one in c four in a that is correct okay so when we are looking at this option 2 when you looking at option 2 both uh, a 4 uh, uh, that is delamination and uh, c1 that is hypoblast in birds okay both are correct but uh, the b3 if you look at b3 infolding of epithelium this is not the correct statement so although a4 and c1 are correct but b3 is wrong so option 2 is also wrong so now we are left up with only 1 and 3 these two options now if you low uh, if you go with this uh this ingression okay and ingression means a3 we we'll go with ingression this one option 3 b4 migration of individual cells from surface into the interior of the embryo that is uh, the idea of ingression so this is also correct b4 c5 mesoderm in sea urchin sea urchin mesoderm this is correct so if you now read this three columns and also check the ingression theory that the migration of individual cells into the embryo forming the sea urchin mesoderm and drosophila neuroblasts these are the correct option so we can say that option 3 is the correct option in c elegans an anchor cell and a few hypodermal cells take part in the formation of vulva the experiment performed to understand the role of these cells in vulva formation and the results obtained as follows if the anchor cell is killed by laser beam hypodermal cells do not participate in vulva formation and no vulva develops second statement if the six hypodermal cells closely located with anchor cell called the vulva precursor cells are killed no vulva developments if the three central vulva precursor uh, cells are destroyed the three outer cell which normally from hypodermis take the fate of vulva cell instead now these are the three observations of an experiment so when you read the first part of the question till this part you know this question is from the vulva development of c elegans and we already know that we have prepared that and this question is exactly from the basics of vulva development that is we have an anchor cell if i show you the picture we have an anchor cell anchor cell secretes the inductive signal and three cells present in the closest proximity to the anchor cell receive this signal maximum 
Now those three cell will turn into the internal signal. I mean, they also have internal signal between themselves. Then they turn into the part of the vulva. And the rest of the other three cells that are present uh, here, denoted with yellow color, they don't receive direct signal from anchor cell, nor they receive any signal from the primary vulva uh, cells. So as a result, they remain epidermal. Okay. Now, in situation of this experiment, it was told that if this major vulval precursor cell are destroyed, these three central vulval precursor cells are destroyed, then these three epidermal cells will change the fate and will now form the vulva structure. Okay. So, from this, what do you understand? Anchor cell act as an inducer. The answer is obviously anchor cell will act as an inducer. There is no doubt about it. So, A is correct statement. Six hypodermal cells with the potential to form vulva from an uh, equivalence group. So, this is also true. Three, uh, like six cells are present, but among that, three cells present in the closest proximity, uh, three out of six participate in the vulva formation. That's also correct. A, B, C, three are all correct. The central cell functions as a 10 cell and uh, two cells on the both side act as 20 cells. This is totally wrong. The 10 cell secretes a short range uh, juxtacrine signaling. This is also wrong. So, the first three statements are correct. Rest two are wrong. So, option one contains all the statement A, B and C. So, option one is the correct answer. So, this is how uh, we need to figure out. Okay, The, the C elegans and how exactly the C elegan anchor cell functions secrete a uh, inductive signal. The, the, up in the neighboring cell and the three cell uh, present in the close proximity receives the signal and upon receiving the signal they turn into uh, the conversion from a normal cell into a vulvar cell and the rest of the cells which fail to receive any signal remain epidermal. Now the following are certain statements regarding the morphogen gradients and cell specification. A morphogen always allow transcription uh, factors. Morphogens are always transcription factor. This is not the thing. This is not always true because morphogens can, can be other. I mean, morphogens job can be of other things as well. So, A is not correct. If you know that A is not correct, then option 1 is wrong, option 4 is wrong. We are left with only two options, 50-50 chance. Second, morphogens can be paracrine factors that are produced in one group of cells and travel to another population of cells. This is a true. Yeah, this is a truth. Like B is correct. If B is correct, then we also know if B is correct, then obviously option 2 is correct because 3 does not contain B. So, even knowing one statement, whether B is correct, we can already answer the question. But let's read the rest of the option. When the concentration of the morphogen drops below a certain threshold, cells stop differentiating and never get determined to another fit. This is also wrong because the function of morphogen is a gradient specific fashion. So, at a very high concentration, a cell has a fit. At a moderate concentration, the cell has a fit. And a concentration less than the threshold, the cell remains uh, the preliminary or precursor level. They never uh, differentiated to the fit. So, to, so, morphogenic response means not only the presence of the morphogen or absence of the morphogen, but also the concentration of morph morphogen that dictates the fit of a cell. So, all this thing matters. The concentration as well as the presence. So, that's why option 2 is correct. The rest of the options are wrong. Let's move to the last question now. Which of the following combinations is correct pairing of ligands with their receptors? And here we have the signaling process during uh, development of embryo. And the signaling process, if you look, FGA fibroblast growth factor, hedgehog signaling uh, protein, WNT also signaling protein. And uh, patch, frizzle, these are all signal receptors. So you need to know which receptor is with what. We know one thing for sure. Everybody should know that FGF has a receptor that is receptor tyrosine kinase. So one with C. So if you know one with C, then we know the option 2 and 3 are not correct. So either option 1 or option 4. Any one of this is correct. So now let's look at the other. Now, knowing only FGF with receptor tyrosine kinase will not solve this question for you. So among these three set statements, you need to know at least two. That's what I already mentioned. You need to know two out of three or two out of four. So here you need to know whether hedgehog is for patched or frizzled. You need to know that. Okay. So we know hedgehog is a signaling molecule for patched and WNT is for the frizzled. So if you know that, then we know option one is the correct one. Okay. So, you should remember, WNT is with frizzled because the N-terminal extracellular site, uh, cysteine rich domain of frizzled binds with the WNT signaling molecule. And the patched is a receptor for hedgehog 
protein for the signaling initiation process. So this is again a question does not require much of an analysis but this is mostly uh, from fixed knowledge. If you know you can remember you can answer this question. So this question although is a part C question but it uh, relies on your uh, you know, memorizing skills. So, as uh, the earlier uh, question, no, not morphogen because this question is analytical, but this question of uh, this anchor cell is also analytical plus both. Okay. But this one regarding the different types of gastrulation process and folding of the cells during gastrulation, this is again entirely depends on your idea of like uh, how much you can remember when you read a topic. Okay. So, both type of uh, things are equally needed even for part C questions these days. Okay. Yes. The answer is yes. If you ask yourself this question that can you qualify CSI net life science exam within six month preparation? Yes. And if you don't need to believe me, just see the results that our students are getting who joined Shomu's biology coaching for six month period of time. So I am really thankful for Shomu's biology and I would suggest everyone to go hey, for it. I a lot of help and support by Suman sir always remembered in my mind the study materials i got helped me to understanding the topic very well and the test series helped me to covering up the syllabus in a perfect time this is all because of the online test series when oh depth God. knowledge what shomu's biology gave me i want to thank shomu biology i want to thank each and every member of shomu's biology for their uh, effort, what they, whatever they are putting on us. And I am very much happy to choose Shomu sir uh, for my CSR net year of journey. I really leveled uh, up my preparation. I was confident on the TOF exam. The classes helped me a lot to understand my subject from very basics to advanced level. So I really thanks uh, Shomu sir and also ma'am uh, for always guiding me. With proper guidance, roadmap, and the help and training with perfect amount of study material and how to utilize them, the resources, everything together can help you qualify that. I am the person who will help you reach to the pinnacle of your success and your journey for the CSI Net Life Science Examination. If you trust me, if you trust my lectures, then join Shomu's Biology Online Coaching. Registration is going on. The details are there in the description. Fill the form to reach out to us or simply contact the number given in this video.